Number nine, it's Wednesday, and let's kick things off with a little bit of whimsy, shall we? Please. Like this montage of dazzling dresses from the early 1900s wow. from an old French fashion book. Look at all the colors, all the majesty, and if I might say this, there was a time when people really knew how to dress. They dressed up for dinner, they dressed up for a walk in the park, they even dressed up for bed. Days, slobs, people yep. are slobs. Yeah. Everybody you look. Yeah, you tell them, Paul. We're in yeah, I went on a run pants. earlier this week about these people leaving the house in pajama bottoms. Yeah. yeah. Enough is enough. If you're going to do that, you know what? Move to Guam. Get out of this country. <laughs> what are you yeah. talking we don't about? need you. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, can't I do? I have too. a little pride in yourself. Yeah. And you're in just running a quick errand, though. You're talking about sweatpants or pajama pants? Pajama pants. I'm okay. talking about those flannel. The flannel. <laughs> Yeah. Plaid pajama bottoms that I see these people wearing yeah. on Sunday afternoons in the grocery store with it's a jacket right thrown room. over it. You look ridiculous. Yeah. Have a they little pride in yourself. Yeah. Comfortable. And cozy. Comfort is for the up, Francis. <laughs> I will not budge from that position that, either. That, no, you're really feeling the holiday spirit until we start yeah. talking about that. Yeah, you're not alone. Number eight, we mentioned the late 80s sitcom Alf yesterday. We didn't know uh, what the cast actually hated working on that show. First off, Alf was a really hard show to shoot huh. because its star was a hand-operated puppet. The voice of Alf was also his creator, a guy named Paul Fusco, and Fusco was really into it. He wanted the cast and crew to act like the puppet was actually an alien, uh -huh. and he didn't uh -huh. want them to reveal any of the secrets for how they shot the show. The set for the show was built on a platform four feet above the ground. They were trap doors throughout it so that Alf could appear in different spots on the set, wow. like the kitchen, the living room. Oh, so the actors always had to be careful not to fall into the hole on the set. And Fusco and two assistants were constantly under the set manipulating Alf. He was also the voice, so he wore a head microphone while they did the scenes, which meant they always had to do a million takes. The studio audience could never enjoy the show, and the actors couldn't get comfortable because they had to stop and start so much. Wow. Max Wright, who played the father, Willie, hated Alf so much that he physically attacked him. Ooh, and like when it got canceled after four seasons, the cast was thrilled. <laughs> there was no rap party or anything. And after his last take, Max Wright went straight to his dressing room, got his stuff, and left. Wow, who knew yeah. about all that drama behind yeah. that show? Uh, mm. That show did pretty well. It did. For, I'm surprised we're only for four seasons. I know. It seemed like it was longer, but oh. uh, there it is. All right, number seven, turn your Christmas tree into perfume. Hmm. Apparently, it's a thing. A company <laughs> called Flamingo Estate will upcycle your tree. They'll pick it up transform it into a magical fragrance. Here's how it works, because I know you're asking this. Yeah. They use a special process to steam distill your tree's branches and turn them into essential oils. The oils will then be prepared especially for you. According to the Flamingo Estate ad, it's your holiday tree bottled. Oh. Right now, the company is only doing this in California <laughs> and New York with hopes of expanding. <laughs> so. How much does yeah. a bottle of your holiday tree cost? Yeah. Oh. 350 bucks. Oh, that's reasonable. Hmm. Your tree. Ho, ho, ho! Yeah. Hmm. Pass. Yeah, I'm all right, also. Yeah, hard pass. Fine. Hard pass for you, huh, Lauren? Yeah. 350? Yeah. What's your line on that? 325? I'd like to go to the store and buy something like that for 20. Listen. Even how much I spent on, on the tree itself, there's no <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's anymore. Right. Yeah. Well, oh what do you need perfume for? You're married. Your husband doesn't care. <laughs> right. It's over. Right. <laughs> Believe me, that's the last thing he's thinking about. It's over. <laughs> I've still got a lot of life to live, Larry. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Number six, we told you about fear of cheese earlier this week. Time for another. Metaphobia, that's the fear of vomiting. Basically, everyone that has this has a low level because, well, no one really likes vomiting, sure. but for certain people, less than 1%, it is a real and chronic condition. These people are scared of other people vomiting, but are also scared that they will be in a situation that will make them nauseous. In extreme cases, the person is also worried that other people find them repulsive, so they have to avoid all sorts of foods, public bathrooms, crowded stores. These people get therapy by being exposed to all these things in small doses while focusing on something external and pleasant. 
that changes their associations and has had some success for patients. Oh, that. All right, number five, every now and then, uh, I get a hankering for some Colgate beef lasagna. Oh, yeah, mm. me too. It's from the same people who make the toothpaste, so. Yeah. Yeah, I can it not be good. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. In the 80s, Colgate really did try to launch a frozen lasagna, or did they? Ah. Uh -huh. There are some questions about that. Colgate denies they made this product. All right, that's and fair. And the packaging was uh, reconstructed from images for a museum. Huh? But Colgate did have a division called Colgate Kitchen Entrees. <laughs> they first denied, then admitted that the division ever existed. Uh -huh. For decades, they'd been trying to compete with Procter & Gamble. Yeah. They even had prototypes for a line of chicken and crab meat on oh. Ooh. Oh. One theory is that they're embarrassed by the lasagna. Uh, don't be ever embarrassed and by And the company the has redacted all mentions of Col... What, what are they, the CIA? Are you, what oh. is going on here? Is this Colgate the toothpaste company? They've redacted all mentions of Colgate entrees from its company. Where is the controversy? I don't understand why... Listen, we all have a lot of things in our past that yeah. are skeletons yeah. in our yeah. closet. Oh, we got a lot Lordy. of skeletons, all of us, and there's yeah. things that people just don't need to know. Right, but sometimes there's no shame. There's no shame in lasagna right. or taking a stab at it. Or crab meat and yeah, chicken. And chicken. Hmm. No shame there. Come on. You're lovable. Colgate's lovable even if they did make bad lasagna. Yeah. You don't have to hide. If people don't like it, that's their problem. Right. Don't go caving out of fear that you're going to get rejected. Right. right. Stand Come up. On. Screw Stand everyone else. Do what yeah. you, up high. Let yeah. your light fly or whatever that's called. Yeah. That seems to be the tagline on all your commentary. <laughs> Screw everyone else. Screw yeah. Yeah. Do what you want to do. The last yeah. thing I need is someone else telling me what to yeah. do. I've got enough people. Yeah. I've got Siri telling me. i got my car map system telling me to take a left here and there. Screw off, man. If I want to turn left, I'll turn left. You should do if it. If I don't, yeah. I won't. Yeah. All, all right. right. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, number four, check out the Avenue of Baobabs in Madagascar. Oh, yeah. They're striking trees that look like something from outer space, and some of them are more than 800 years old. Now, look at these great low-resolution photos we have. Their <laughs> trunks are more than 150 <laughs> feet around, more They're than 1,000 years ago. Explorers came upon the trees. They said the devil must have ripped them out of the ground and put them back upside down since their tops resemble roots. Mm. Yeah, why are these so bad? Just so often we just get <laughs> some of the best the low res photos. Something. Just gotta, yeah. you know. The throwback. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> vintage. All right, number three. Boy, they're giving me a lot of reads today. Yeah, uh -huh. you're doing a great I'm job, really Perry. Yeah. Uh, you're doing great. <clears throat> Dating in the metaverse could be a big trend in 2022. According to some romance scientists, one of the most popular dating locations could be Animal Crossing. The platform uses avatar-based virtual reality experiences to create a digital intimacy that could build towards a real-life relationship. I don't understand anything <laughs> that I just read. Yeah. But I read it well. I said yeah, it like I knew yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. talking about. You delivered it convincingly. You can fake it through life. You know, you yeah. get all these people reading books and earning degrees. Right. If you can just sound like you've read yeah. a couple of mm -hmm. books, that's all that matters. Yep. Even if they're just coloring books, you yep. read them. Yep. They count. Right. Larry. If they don't like it, Paul, screw off. Yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> there you go. We've learned two important lessons yeah. today. <laughs> Number two, if you ever shrink your favorite sweater in the dryer, you can unshrink it. Really? Yes. First, let the sweater soak for 10 minutes in a sink filled with lukewarm water and a little baby shampoo. Okay. Then drain the sink and gently squeeze the sweater to remove excess water. Then lay your sweater on a towel on top of a flat surface. Roll up the towel to absorb more water. Then place the sweater on a fresh towel and gently stretch it while it's still damp. Then you must keep it flat until it dries. A lot of work now. And if all goes well, you have saved your favorite sweater. Mm. All right. It's fun. Yeah, it was fun. Number one. This is another one from the Twitter account of Dan McWade, who uh, is the co-founder of Defector, the sports media blog and media company. This one says, there are a few future famous people in early seasons of Baywatch. Many of them plunge into the water in some fashion. Take a look. Hey, Trevor. Don't! Oh, 
Look, Beach Boy, <laughs> I'm completely legit. And you know, I'm not losing a minute of sleep because you don't like what I'm doing. Well, it's not just us. The police don't like it either. Police? Come on, give me a break. That's the point. It's new. It's never yeah. Yeah. That's the point, man. If the surf sacrifice is going to work, it's got to yeah, be a virgin board. Yeah. Oh, you want big cool. waves, don't you? Who? Virgin David surfer. Stanley, down the right. Virgin surfer. What? It's your oh, choice. Dude, dude. Take it. Take fire. a damn board. <laughs> me. School, not here, right, man. This is, uh, Don't talk back to me. Come on, get him. Danny, Danny, Danny Trey. Come on, right now. No. Oh, and, and Pedro from Napoleon Dynamite on the right. I didn't pick oh. up oh, on I didn't that. that. How about like that? Who knew? It's a clay watch. Wow. Where art begins. That's a nine and nine. You're the flower of my heart, sweet nine at night.